as you can see the stock is all already been locked so this isn't a full modification it's just the vast breach As you notice, it's not completely stock internals. Um, you can see the stock breach no longer exists. Take that out. Uh, this one part was cut off. This is necessary. Keep this in circular form, whatever you want to say. And then cut it back to this black piece there. I'll take it out so you can see it better. And then other ones are pretty much just this has an upgraded, I don't know, it doesn't have a stock catch thing, but it will have an upgraded one by the end of the video. So, let's start modifying it. The first step is to cut off that uh, here, like I said before. And then you can take this up, out, but just to show you this is stock steel, nothing done. We got lucky. It's near perfect. Per near perfect. Alright, so now I'm going to unscrew it and then show you the stock internals. We will be adding, most likely, let me go get the spring here. Uh, you may have seen our last video, expand the blast spring. We're probably going to add that along with the stock long shot spring. Give it a little so extra power. You can see power. the or the stock plunger. Uh, no, you can see no modification done to it. And then we got this black piece, which is crucial for this modification. And the Where'd plunger it come itself. From? Where'd the black piece come from? Inside. Bottom of there, just so you guys know. So there we go. Okay, so we're ready to start modifying. We have a foot of 1730 seconds brass and 916 brass. We won't be using all of them. So let's get to work here. As you see we have a binder full of nerf modifications that we either have the guns for for tutorial or we just like a lot. So you see some other random things. But we're interested in the long shot. This is SG nerf modification tutorial. We'll be putting a link right there for it. And we took some of the, the measurements for the 916 brass and 30 seconds for this breach. Okay, so for this um, modification, we need 13 centimeters of brass, centimeters, not inches. Um, this is 9 sixteenths, so we just need to cut like about right there, 13. So um, we'll go cut that with our handy pipe cutters. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so we are now cutting the brass, suspenseful. Yep. Remember, 13 centimeters of 9 16. sixteenths brass. Okay, so super clean pipe cutters. I recommend buying these, although I buy a bigger version. This cannot cut one inch PVC. Really annoying. So when using brass, cut it very carefully and slowly. If you tighten it too much, it will start to warp the brass too much so it can't even be used. Darts don't go out of warp brass, just FYI. So, yeah. that's our brass. So 13 centimeters, we'll widen that with our needle nose pliers, just a little bit, not too much. So there we go. Okay, so now we're making our second cut. This is still the 9 sixteenths brass. Alright, uh, so we're cutting, measuring at 11.5. This one's not with the pipe cutter though, since it's the half barrel mod, I guess you could say, where you cut it in half and down. So we're going to do that with the Dremel in the garage, we'll be right back. Okay, so now you got your... 13 inches of brass and mark it 11.5. Here's when you do the half barrel mold, you'll see what I mean when I cut it. This does have to be very clean and very exact. If it's not, then your breach could fail. So this is what I mean by the half bail mod, but we're going to cl clean it up off camera real fast. So we'll be back in our workshop in a minute. Okay, so we just finished the half barrel cut, cleaned it up a little bit. This is the part when you push the bolt sled forward. This goes forward and accepts the dart right into there. So it needs to be clean because you can't have your dart catching on the edges and jamming. We've had that before. It's a, it's a problem. It's a bitch to fix. So we're going to now tape down the base of this so that it fits snugly into this cap. 
which just remember goes inside here. Yeah, so we're using some green tape that's all we really have. It's all we could find at least. Yeah, so how does that need? That's probably good. Enough. So I just do a few wraps of V tape down it and then it's probably a little too much right in that particular spot. And then that could fit pretty snugly. Titanium scissors. Yeah. Pretty snugly into there and then you'll super glue it in. Uh, this piece can't move. Yeah, let's see. Also. Too snugly? Is it good? It's good. Alright, and then. Okay, so we're gonna super glue that in. Jelly, we need to. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, right, and then take your hot glue gun and fill in the dead space. Now let the hot glue dry. Okay, so this next step involves a 9 16 bit drill bit. Uh, you may not have this, it's actually a very expensive bit, it was like 20 bucks. There are other ways to do what we're about to do, but nothing this easy. So basically, we need 9 16 brass to fit inside this orange piece, and you'll fi figure out why later. So, 9 16 So, obviously it's in the vise, if it's in your hand, it'll spin and hook a lot. So We figured that out the hard way. Yeah. And cleanliness is still good, so keep that in mind. So as you notice, it's not perfectly centered. As long as it doesn't go through the side of it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but as close as possible is best. So the idea for boring this out is now, you're going to slide this over the 916 brass. It's a very strong fit, so you might need, even need a hammer. But this is how it differs from most. Is This is why our breach is special. Or it's different than most, is it doesn't actually need glue because it has such a strong friction fit that it just sticks on when you actually push it on all the way really tightly. Now if you have no clue what we're talking about, this is the bolt sled, right? This moves up and down with the bolt sled. This Normally, you would have to cut off this little orange piece at the top, right here, glue it onto the brass so that this piece could hook on, but instead, by boring this out, we can slide it on, maybe a little bit of E-tape, it'll be such a friction stick that nothing will come off and we don't, we probably won't have to use any glue and there's pretty much no way this breach is going to break. So this is what we mean uh, by friction fit is this is not moving anywhere. To get this on, I use a hammer and hit it multiple times. You need to make sure with your uh, half barrel cut that you line up the brass exactly with the edge of this orange piece so that it receives the dirt. That's uh, kind of the bigger part of this thing. So That's the important part. That's always so special. Let's, let's get on to the little stuff. Okay, so we're terrible. This is actually our first review and we made a mistake. Don't put this orange piece on until you've taken this brass and stuck it through the back of this thing coming out the other side. Otherwise you just have to pull this whole thing off. It was off. like 10 minutes to, to take it off without destroying our brass. So, so don't do that. Important message like right important, there. Important, yeah. Okay, anyways, back to what we were doing. So I'm to make sure the brass can't slide uh, either forward or backwards in this orange piece or black piece. We're now applying E-tape right there. And I'll show you the next place after this is done. Okay. Now onto the back piece. This one is also equally important, so uh, do both. So now it's good and it still works perfectly fine. So now we're on to the barrel of the gun. Here at AC Nerf Shop, we bleed for Nerf. I was going to take your one foot length of 17 to 30 seconds of grass. You need eight centimeters measured. Uh, okay, so eight centimeters. Sorry. All right. And I'll do another half barrel mod to there. Um, we'll go out to the Dremel again and you can see that happen. Safety glasses are key. Okay, so we're about to do the 8 centimeter half barrel mod. This piece will be going in the front of the gun. This is the barrel, just so you know. So if you want to do a 9 16 barrel, just upsize the brass by one size each.
so again, we'll, we'll clean it up and get back to you. Okay, so we finished the half barrel mod. Now our goal is to make this 930, 916th brass fit inside this orange pipe, which came from ow, the front. And it's a lot smaller right now, so we just basically wrap this brass and eat. So you just need two um, from the front and back of this, and that is all you pretty much need for this. So do the second we'll go, one. We'll off go camera. ahead and wrap that off camera and show you when we're done. Okay, yes. so we're taking this thingy apart to add the expanded blast spring, and we managed to break off. I don't know if you can see this. On the other end, there's two screw ports that screw it into the back of this orange piece here. We managed to break one off. Don't do that. It's now got a really weak uh, hold, and it may pop out and break, and we'll have to take it apart to fix it. It'll be a pain in the butthole. Yeah, well, it should still look fine, though. But it, it'll still function. Yeah, so... Now, if you broke thing. both of them off, you'd be in trouble. Yeah. Actually, it would still function, because there's rims inside the shell. But it'd be definitely not be a risk you want to take. I guess we're not even expanded last end. So we're just oh, about done. I don't know if you've seen this yet. This is the end of done the, the finished front and I'll show you how this goes together this will when it's done we'll just close like that and now as a not 100% but really good air seal and then so we're gonna put this gun together for you and yeah. shoot it a couple times okay so this is the internals of the long shot when it's done a quick pan view and then Notice our catch spring is not upgraded. We plan on doing that. We just couldn't find the right spring. Uh, should still catch, but we're not sure. And then also the primary indicator was taken out because we had to reinforce this with some hot glue so that never breaks. Inside. Because this, this we talked yeah. about it earlier. That was the little screw port that broke. So we're making sure this wall doesn't break because we'd have problems yeah. if it does. So we lost our priming indicator. Oh well. But we plan on doing a different one later, possibly. So, so now. So we'll put this thing together, fire it a couple times, and see if it works. So here we go. Okay, so we got uh, the finished product. Hopefully you have also finished um, stock clips, stock darts. So here we go. <laughs> Good stuff. We have some kinks to work out. Okay, so as you can see right now, some of the shots are getting like 40, 45 feet, while others are getting 70 to 75. So we have some kinks to work out. This was just, we did this in like half an hour. Um, if you were following along and made your own, we'd love it if you posted a video response with your gun, kind of what you did. If you made any changes, we'd really like to hear those. We, we could, we'd probably take them into consideration for our next gun. Uh, you probably won't see this gun again unless we get an integration and a paint job up here and then we'll have another video on it. Otherwise though, hope you followed along. Hope your gun turned out as well as ours. Thanks for watching. And remember nerfers, always wear eyeglasses.